Britain is pushing ahead with human challenge trials where healthy people will be deliberately exposed to COVID-19. The program is the first of its kind, and according to researchers, it could begin early next year. The findings will be used to explore possible treatments and could potentially speed up the development of a vaccine. More than $40 million will be invested in the first stage of the program. Now, all the volunteers will be healthy adults aged between 18 and 30 with no underlying illnesses. The researchers say that the first phase will aim to discover the smallest dose of the coronavirus that could be used in future vaccine trials. What is critical is that if people are considering this, it must be overseen by an ethics committee. It and the volunteers must have full consent and they must select the volunteers in order to minimise their risk. Uh, because you will be challenging people with a virus that we do not have a treatment for. Now for a closer look, Professor Dale Fisher from the Yong Lu Lin School of Medicine joins us uh, for more on this. Uh, Professor, we'll get to the ethics in a moment. Firstly, though, how effective is a human challenge study, given that safety concerns may in fact limit what researchers can do? Yeah, hi again, Steve and Dawn. Um, firstly, uh, I guess I'd just like to say that it's a, it's a pity that we're at a position where these are, are really highly considered, um, because we've shown in Asia that, that you don't need to go to these extremes and public health measures can work. But obviously in the UK, they've got about 15,000 cases a day and 100 deaths a day. So that really does change the dynamic. So, so usually a, a clinical trial, um, everyone involved would get standard preventative efforts uh, as the baseline. And then the volunteers would receive either placebo or the vaccine. So volunteers would get information on distancing, masks, hand hygiene, all these types of things to try and prevent it. And then you'd give it to maybe placebo to 10,000 people and the vaccine to another 10,000 people. And you see if the vaccine is, is protective. But this is done in a setting while you're trying to prevent the vaccine because that's, uh, sorry, you're trying to prevent the infection because that's what we're trying to do. In this challenge effort, we're actually going to infect them. So, so therefore you can obviously deal with a lot less people because you know everyone's going to get uh, get in, or you know everyone's going to get exposed to the the virus. Whereas most people in in other vaccines may not even get exposed, so you need that bigger number. Um, so efficacy, you you can get there with with a much uh, with a much smaller number. Uh, they're talking about well dozens in the first phase, but probably hundreds in 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 subsequent phases. Uh, of course, this doesn't help with safety. Safety, you still need to do to do uh, lots of people to, to see if the vaccine's safe. And, and, but most side effects occur quite early on, so, so it, you wouldn't have that delay. So this will definitely quicken things up. Professor Fisher, we already have a global race to get an effective vaccine. So how is this program going to impact that? Well, it'll, it'll certainly be faster than a conventional phase three trial. The question is, will it be translatable to, to naturally occurring disease? Uh, this, this, these challenge trials will use a much lower uh, viral inoculum, possibly, than, than you might get exposed to naturally. Uh, the other thing is, as you mentioned, it's only going to involve 18 to 13, 18 to 30 year olds that are completely well. So, of course, they're not the ones we worry about predominantly. So will, will the vaccine be as effective in elderly or immune suppressed people? And what are the possible risks and, in fact, ethical dilemmas involved in, in this human challenge trials? Well, we know even with younger people, uh, they can get sick. And even though the death rate is, is, is very low, there, there are still deaths and, and it would just be um, sort of unf unfathomable that uh, someone would die in a in a challenge trial, but uh, but of course you have to weigh up the ethics, as I mentioned earlier, of of not doing the trial because a hundred people are, are dying a day anyway. So so this is one of the ethical things is actually doing harm to the volunteers, 
Another one is, are they being coerced? And a typical financial fee for, for all the time and, and commitment that the volunteers give is typically around £4,000. And I know this follow-up will go over the course of a year, but, uh, but it, does, uh, it does sort of bias the people that are going to be attracted to, uh, to contributing. Of course, there'll be altruistic people doing it as well, but some people may be coerced by the money. But, but also we're giving it to people and, and there is no cure. Um, and we don't know the long-term side effects. We don't know about you know, how many people are going to end up with permanent cardiac or neurological defects or these long haul things. So, um, and even going forward into the future, are, um, are people going to get a, a late manifestation that, that might be found to be due to COVID in which case the researchers might be vulnerable for the health of the volunteers for you know, right into their future. So, so there's a lot of ethical considerations, but I, I guess the protagonists would be saying, we don't think it's ethical to not do it because we can't defeat this virus without a vaccine. Um, so it, it might be ethical in, in Europe and the United States. I don't believe it would be ethical in Singapore because, because we have control uh, without such extreme trials. Yeah, thank you for sharing your thoughts with us and putting some things into perspective as well. Professor Dale Fisher from the Yonglu Lin School of Medicine uh, speaking to us there.